how great is using the Ask Emily intro again? I wanted to do a good old fashioned Ask Emily. I got a message on Instagram, we'll call her Lexi. It doesn't this feel good, it's like the good old days. She said, hi Emily, I pray you and your family are doing well. I have a question. I've previously seen that you are pro dating apps as some of your family members have found their spouses via different sites. True. However, I wanted to ask about young adults navigating the dating scene where men are only asking women out via DMs or WhatsApp chats. My sister and I are in our early 20s. The guys only ask us out via DMs, never face to face. I think there's an element of low risk for the guys as asking via DMs make them feel more comfortable, free, and lowers the negative feelings of rejection. But to me, asking via DMs requires very little and doesn't mean much. She said, I even have a couple experiences talking to guys via DMs. When they do ask me out really early in the talking stage, I say, no, I'd like to get to know you a little bit better, or I'd prefer if we do a group situation, they stop all communication after that. Anyway, I wanted your thoughts on how to navigate this in the dating scene. Hope you see my message soon. Keep well. Lexi, girl, it's true. For those of you who are in the dating scene, raise your hand, it is even worse than when I stopped posting. It seems like every day the dating climate continues to get worse. Let's cut right to it. Let's talk about men asking women on a date. It's so important for you to remember and understand that you can have your standards in dating for the person, right? The qualities that he embodies, the person that he is, right? These are my standards for that. But you have to understand that you can also have standards for yourself when it comes to the practicals of dating. And what do I mean by that? So many young people in our culture have been conditioned to believe that it is intense or too much to be straightforward and to communicate clearly. And I want to remind you that it's not too intense to communicate clearly and to to say what your standards are and what your desires are. I'm proud of you for saying, right? I don't want to go on a date just yet. I would love to get to know you a little bit better. Amazing. A plus. Give yourself the permission and remember that it's okay to say something like, I would love for you to call me and ask me on that date. People are like, Ugh. are you kidding right now? Do you understand that you are calling him to like step up in a good way in a way that's unique sadly in this day and age and if he is not willing to pick up the phone and call you or ask you face to face and he runs the other way it tells you so much it tells you so much if a man however old he is does not have the courage to say you know what i can call a woman on the phone and ask her on a date does he have the maturity to be in a relationship with you does he have the maturity to lead you and guide you in a faith-centered relationship if that's what your heart is longing for and desiring everybody gets to choose what their standards are if you were to say something like that lexi like if you want to ask me on a date, I would love for you to call me on the phone or ask me in person. And he disappears. It reveals so much. And I have a video called If He Runs, He's Not The One. In sharing about anything, right? If on your first date you share about your heart, your life, what's important to you. Or I have a ch crazy Chiquita video on that about Fido, the dog. Uh, about talking about Fido, this really important part of your life on the first date. And he flees. It is clear as the day that this was not the man for you. And even in disappointment, even if you're like, man, this really stinks, it's clear. If this man is not willing to do something as simple as call me on the phone and tell me he would love to take me on a date, he's not the man for me. If that's the standard you decide that you want for your own dating life. This bridges over Lexi to your second point of speaking your heart to say, I would just love to get to know you a little bit better before we go on a date, or I would love to hang out with you in a group setting, which is a fine thing to say as well. If they cut off all communication, I want you to hear it clearly. He's not the guy for you. He's not the one for you. If he's interested in you and he wants to get to know you more, he'll say, oh, no problem, no problem. And then later on down the road, I think it's an important thing to communicate that. Like I've gotten to know you a little bit better. You know, if you want to ask me on a date again, I would love to say yes, um, to not leave it hanging because he'll be a little bit more wary of asking you on a date. If you've already said, hey, I would love to get to know you a little better. Then he doesn't know like, okay, how much is a little bit better, right? Has it been, it's been a couple of weeks. Should I ask her on a date now? She might say, you know, I want to wait a little bit longer. And then you can say, you know, 
hey, you, you know, you can ask me again. But when he cuts off communication, it's understand that it's if, if you're communicating your heart, communicating clearly um, what you desire, what your practicals are, what your standards are for the practicals of dating, um, you didn't do anything wrong. That there's nothing wrong with that. I think a lot of times in dating right now, the question of what is wrong with me is something a lot of women are asking and what did I do wrong because the communication is such a disaster. Ghosting is such a real part of the whole entire thing and it's really leaving a lot of people wondering, what did I do wrong? And sometimes there are things that we did wrong, you know, and that's a whole nother branch to the tree. Many times within the conversations with women and men that I'm, I'm talking with at conferences and events and friends that we have, um, it's not something that they did wrong. It's really a, like an undercurrent of immaturity, an undercurrent of the breakdown of communication, an undercurrent of people just you know, kind of trying to take the easy route in things, not getting up the guts to say, I'm gonna do a hard thing. I'm gonna ask this girl out face to face. She might say yes, she might say no, but I'm gonna take the risk anyway, right? This undercurrent, and it goes both ways. All of this goes both ways in terms of these undercurrents. And it's very difficult and very challenging, but I hope that these are practical things that you can implement into your own life to say, I want to be intentional about this and I want a man to rise to the occasion of calling or asking me face to face and you're able to communicate that. That's what we have to understand is men do this because like that's the standard. A lot of women say like, well, whatever, this is just the way it goes now. So I have to say yes over DM. I have to say yes to a text message date because no guy is ever going to call me. When you ask a man to rise to the occasion of, you know, pursuit of you or inviting you on a date or whatever, you get to see how he responds. That response will reveal to you, you know, if he's willing to step up and do that. And I think that that is a good thing for you to see and discern moving forward. I'll link those videos that I mentioned down below. Let me know what you think. If this is something you experience, if your whole life is like, yes, this is something that I'm going through or I never even thought that I could do this or I thought like, wow, that is way too much. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. That's all for today. Talk to you soon. Bye.